All right, hello, this is this is Jim Peacock with Peak Careers Consulting, and tonight we're doing an interview here on tips on how to keep LinkedIn simple. Um, this is based on a blog that uh, I wrote this uh, recently, and we'll talk, you'll be able to see that blog uh, later on off, off this YouTube channel. So who's Peak Careers? I've been teaching the Facilitating Career Development course since 2000. It was formerly known as the, sort of commonly known as the CDF class. And it's a course that is required uh, to receive two different certifications now. There's the Global Career Development Facilitator and the Certified uh, Career Service Provider. So those are two different certifications that both need this course. It's a 120 hour car course. And then again, I've been teaching that since 2000. Um, I also produce a, a newsletter for career practitioners on a wide variety of topics. And I do individual career counseling and coaching, really from college age to boomers. I've, I've got quite a bit of experience in higher ed, as well as working with uh, midlife career changers. One of the things I love doing is workshops for career practitioners on a variety of topics. And the one, I, a couple of my more popular ones are using card sorts in your practice. Uh, another another popular workshop is understanding transitions, and I have one on creating luck called Happenstance, and then I do a number of workshops on LinkedIn. I also provide online seminars for career practitioners, which are uh, discussion-based, and they're with other career practitioners, and they're four- and five-week-long discussion-based seminars and are uh, have 10 to 15 recertification hours attached to them. And here's some of the the uh, online seminars that I have, again, some of the same topics that I do when I'm uh, working uh, uh, with my with the workshops. And then I've got a couple other new ones, uh, Holland Theory, actually, I just submitted for that, and ho hopefully that'll be ready. And then I have a, a friend of mine who's developing a K-12 career development uh, seminar. So those are all on my website, and you can see those. But today we have three LinkedIn experts that I have a, a tremendous amount of respect for. Uh, this is uh, Bob McIntosh is here. He's a career trainer who leads more than 17 job search workshops at an urban career center, as well as critiquing LinkedIn profiles and conducting mock interviews. Job seekers and staff look to him for advice on the job search. He's also a prolific blogger. Hannah Morgan is a job search and media specialist. Hannah is also a speaker and author. Uh, she's actually known as Career Sherpa out there. She's got uh, over 15 years experience uh, in a variety of different settings, outplacement, human uh, resources. And she's been quoted widely in a, a variety of national media sites and has a weekly column. Uh, Sabrina has over 15 years experience as a, in the higher ed career development field and is a uh, holistic career life coach and consultant. And we've been fortunate here in Maine to have, have uh, Sabrina come to Maine and do a number of LinkedIn workshops. She was a keynote one time and uh, she actually did another one on the incubator uh, uh, workshop that's very interesting. So what I'd like to do is start, uh, we'll start our conversations here just as I uh, stop sharing and we'll start here. So we're gonna start with, uh, with Hannah Morgan and uh, we're looking for some tips for people who feel like uh, these are clients probably of yours that may have just feel like I don't have the time to do this and how much, what, what kind of tips do you recommend to people for making this manageable and right this is a huge challenge we're, we're we, we have a shortage of time anyway right so there has to be you have the individual has to see value in doing whatever it's going to be they're going to be doing and that means logging into LinkedIn for 15 minutes a day right so in order to make that happen they have to see value and they have to make it a habit and it takes about 21 days, 30 days to make something a habit. So it is finding that 15 minutes of time in your day that's really going to work. For me and, and for a lot of my clients that are early birds, it's morning. So before they, you know, with their first cup of coffee, before turning on the news, they're logging into LinkedIn and they're using LinkedIn to actually get their news. So the value there is you're able to follow good news streams, which is a whole nother topic, but assuming you're following good news streams and you're connected with some people who are sharing good news, um, interesting articles, you read articles. So you're gaining your career knowledge, you're keeping up with what's going on in your occupation, your industry, and then you find one of those good articles and you share it as a status update with a little tidbit about your takeaway from the article or why you recommend your friends, colleagues read it. 
ta-da, 15 that's, minutes. That's great. And actually, I love, I love that tip. And, and uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I do is I use, I use Feedly. So I follow a bunch of different bloggers and pretty much everybody that's here today and others that I find. And so I can take a quick look through Feedly that sort of pulls all these different blogs together. And I'll, be, I'll look for some good career blogs that to, to post. That's, so one of, that's one of my tips uh, uh, that I would share that, that supports Hannah's tips. So great. Yep. So let's uh, thank you, Hannah. And uh, we, we uh, will come back to you probably at the end and see if there's any, any other insight. But uh, let's, let's, uh, let's go to Bob. Bob is Bob's have a little video issues. And so he's, he's kind of calling in through uh, Sabrina's phone. But let's, Bob, what do you, what do you have for, uh, for us as far as tips? Well, yeah, I'm a little technically challenged. Uh, my my Wi Fi is not very good. But in any case, what Hannah says about reading articles and sharing them with your connections is great advice. You know, I'm on LinkedIn probably more than anyone I know, so I don't really understand how someone can't carve out 15 minutes a day to be on LinkedIn. And when I say this to my clients, they're like, whoa, really? 15 minutes a day? Every day? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn every day as it is, and I'm probably on it about 45 minutes. Now, other than sharing articles, and Hannah wrote a really good article on this, there are a number of other ways that you can share updates with your connections. And one of them is simply maybe asking a question. And when I ask questions on LinkedIn, I tend to get some really good answers from people. Mm. So that's one way you can do it. You can also share some of your knowledge. And, you know, even though you're out of work, you still have a great bit of knowledge that you can share. And believe it or not, when people read what you have to share and it's sound, sound advice, then you're going to be um, sort of considered a thought leader in your industry, even if you're out of work. Now, one thing I also wanted to mention is if you're having a hard time finding the time, say, maybe in the morning or in the evening, then what I do is I carry my phone around with me and I use the LinkedIn app. And, you know, maybe I'll just browse through it and see what kind of news is, is happening with my connections or I'll open an article. And you can do quite a bit, you know, with your with your app, with your uh, LinkedIn app. So, you know, that's another way to find time to use LinkedIn during the day. So, you know, get on the phone and uh, go to your LinkedIn app and check out what's going on with your connections and also, you know, write maybe an update or two and your good is done. So, that, that, I mean, that's how I would solve the problem. That's great. That's great, Bob. I like that. I, I'm not big of, I don't use my phone for a lot of stuff, but it's certainly in my pocket all the time. And then when you have those down times, it's a, that could be a great time to use it. So. Hi, hi. Great. Sabrina, what are you, what are your thoughts on this? Just building on this sort of creating a habit and um, adding posts and whatnot. Um, Bob had mentioned asking questions and I think that that's really a great idea uh, the other thing you can do is you can ask a question, you can tag some of your friends. Now we as a group often do this. And if I'm tagging Jim or Bob, I'm going to get some good feedback right away because I brought them into the conversation. So I think asking questions um, is really nice. Also a way to honor somebody. And the other thing is when you're posting, you can rename that person. And I think that's another way to build rapport with people and give them that credit. So maybe Hannah or Jim or Bob have posted something and I'm going to repost it and I'm going to tag them and thank them for that. Another piece that I'm hearing kind of as a theme is adding in some piece from the article. So picking a quote from it or, um, you know, adding in your comments about that article. So it's not just a straight share there's an, a value add to it or what you liked about it. And that makes it more robust. The other thing I think that's coming to mind is I've sometimes taken just one of my own photos. I did this last week. It was a picture I'd taken at a park during a walk and it was a park bench on and, a, and just a pretty scene at a lake. And I posted this sort of little challenge and I said, here's your challenge. How about taking five minutes to do nothing? Cause I often post about mindfulness and you know, some people are into meditation and other people are like, eh. 
And I just said, how about taking five minutes to do nothing and just wrote a little blurb about it and tell me what time you're doing nothing. And it was really fun to see people say it's noon and I'm going out for my nothingness, you know, or I'm doing my, my... so asking people or challenging people, what, you know, ask yourself, how can I engage? What is it that I can do that's going to pull another person in or intrigue them or get them to respond to me? Because it's this back and forth that's allowed me to build such an amazing community through LinkedIn. And it's why I'm talking to every single person on the screen right now is because of LinkedIn. I didn't know any of these other presenters until I was on this tool. So that speaks volumes right there. I I think people, a lot of people who are new to LinkedIn don't, don't realize what a, what a uh, sort of warm and it's a professional network but it's really an open network that is, it's really all about learning. There's so much learning that goes on and people are willing to help each other. And, you know, starting off with this, something as simple as just liking someone's post, commenting is always better, but if you want to just start on LinkedIn, when I first started on LinkedIn, I didn't, I just was sort of watching everything and I just sort of watched the sort of what was going on, how do you act, what's, what's expected. It took me a while to sort of just pay attention to the community, but LinkedIn is a very forgiving and a very, uh, very welcoming learning community. And I think, so just, you think about a little bit of time every day, just like someone's comment, because I, if someone likes one of my blog posts, I see that and I see who that is. And that's how you get noticed. It's something as simple as just liking a comment um, again commenting is always better on it but liking it is is good enough good good enough place to start so those are some good tips other people now you guys uh, have heard other people's thoughts and stuff any other uh, comments here uh, or other tips that you might want to share well I, yeah if i could i i would say that why not look at linkedin as a as fun platform you know it's a platform where not only can you learn from reading posts and learn from your connections comments. But, you know, just uh, take some time to read, read some articles, uh, you know, articles that appeal to you. And, uh, you know, in a way, you can educate yourself um, in terms of your, your occupation and so forth. Great. Thanks, I'll throw out one more really a specific one. And um, we make all these connections with people. So, Let's just pretend I have just connected with um, Jim for the first time. One of the things that's really good to do is for you to go and onto Jim's pro for me to go onto Jim's profile. If I've just connected with him, look in his activity section and see what is, has he written anything or has he posted something recently? And so right away I can start engagement with that person that I just connected with. So I'm becoming that contributor right away, you know, immediately. So we didn't used to always have that tool and that's kind of more recent that you can actually see someone's activity right from their page. Right. And yeah, I think that that's just one really quick tip. Do and that's that. not that far down their profile. If you go to their profile, it's, it's somewhere okay. near the top, you know, or under the summary, I think it is. And so it's not far down. So you can go and see, see their activity. And it's a great way to sort of begin to learn about what people are doing. Right. Anna, any final thoughts? So I'm an introvert, right? And so uh, I, I love LinkedIn because it allows me to respond and to interact and to snoop um, and to get the information that's going to make it more comfortable for me to have a, a conversation with somebody. So I love going to LinkedIn and sort of digging around and seeing what I might have in common with people. And I think there are a lot of other introverts birds out there that the idea of networking and going to a meeting is sort of daunting but if I can have a conversation with somebody online it's a little bit safer I will say so like that's my whole like introvert thing I, I think that you know introverts are great at social media I believe that um, just because we it, it's a great forum for us but I will say that don't go hog wild and, and tag uh, and post like a, th- a thousand things things a day on LinkedIn, because that can annoy your network that might be looking at that. Sort of the basic rule of thumb, in case you're wondering, is sort of one or two posts per day. Um, Anything more than that will show up too frequently, potentially, in somebody's stream. Um, And it could be you just don't want to have peaks and valleys where, you, you know, you, you post it, you shared, liked, commented five things one day, and then you don't do anything for the rest of the week. So using a tool like um, Buffer is great because it allows you to schedule those reshares or whatever. It doesn't allow, 
it doesn't allow you to re do that with likes, but just be mindful of how much you are doing on LinkedIn. Don't go too crazy. Yeah. For the rest of you uh, introverts out there, you can go to Bob's uh, website. He's got a whole flurry of, of blogs on introverts. So, well, listen, I'm going to... I agree with Anna. I, I violate that rule uh, big time. <laughs> It's easy to do. You get excited. It's easy to happen. Yes, it is. Well, listen, folks, thank you uh, very much. And this was really, uh, this, this topic is uh, uh, the blog topic that I created this week, keeping LinkedIn simple in 10 minutes a day. And you can, you can find it on my website or you can go to that bit.ly, which is just the bit.ly uh, peak careers 87. You can sign up for my newsletters for career practitioners and receive the top 10 tips when working with an undecided person. And I uh, would love to connect with you uh, on any one of those different social media forums. And uh, I just want to say once again, thank you very much to my, uh, my, my LinkedIn experts and friends, one of which I've met face to face and the others are just friends through uh, social media, which is awesome. So thank you all. Thanks so Thank much you. for having us, Jim. Thanks, Jim.